Good morning, folks. The evening never ended for us, and that's a making the morning news first for me, so let's see how this all goes with SO a step slow as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star was fairly quiet. The active regions are remaining calm and producing only smaller flares. The solar wind is dropping out as Earth exits the coronal hole stream, and geomagnetic conditions are quiet. But recall, those CMEs on the south a couple of days ago they could reach Earth midday today, and NOAA is predicting a low-level geomagnetic storm. Eyes on the solar wind. Up first in the article front, active galactic nuclei and the jets they produce. We've seen coherence and alignment deviating from randomness to major levels of statistical significance, and the stamp is put on that concept today as parsec scale radio jet alignment may be secretly revealing the biggest structures and patterns known in the cosmos. Quick note on Cascadia up next, as the segments are better understood from their small swarms. Most active is the south, most energetic is the north, and the central region is both weaker and quieter. I wonder if that means it's building energy or is less risky. They don't know either. And so we're moving on to a quick note on a great paper that turned out to be a lot more than just Neanderthals. My favorite part was the data showing the taxa stratified largely based on the 12,000-year cycle events and even the 6,000-year Heinrich harmonics as you go further back. Always astounding to see how many species the Lachamp event actually took out 40-something thousand years ago. Up next, shear wave anisotropy in the core. Basically, the direction where the seismic wave is coming from determines how rapidly the event is communicated through the Earth's interior. Of course, observers may recall this should be expected given the recent discovery this year that our core is lopsided. That, of course, was a complement to the larger asymmetry as you look deep through the geospheres, the LLSVPs, the massive core mantle plumes, the varying depths of the conductive layers like the LVZ. And speaking of which, the low-velocity zone appears to exist on Mars as well. It's not that surprising, and it helps explain some of the events in the past that we have attempted to describe before. Now, last but not least, the working of Mercury's magnetic field, externally, through little more than the interplanetary magnetic field, the rippling current sheet in the solar system. It's responsible for as much of the geomagnetic variation as CMEs and coronal holes because it works the solar wind at sunspot maximum and minimum sweeping across the planets every 7 to 10 days. This is, of course, what we have guessed, seen confirmed, and seen observational proof of at the galactic scale. This is what triggers the solar micronova at the zenith of the 12,000-year cycle. And for website members who need that little pushover into belief of that evidential line, yesterday's Fly in the Wall podcast. Let's just say when the solar micronova begins solving grand astrophysics mysteries we didn't even know existed, it may be time to perk up. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 7 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.